Good morning, and welcome to the Peorian. I'm your host, Paul Gordon. To say Peoria is a hotbed for basketball is an understatement. It's the host city for the original March Madness, when the best high school teams in the state of Illinois play for a state championship. It has been the home of some of the best high school teams and players in the country in the last 20 years or so. And then there is Bradley University. A national powerhouse in the 1950s and 60s, the Bradley men's team has long had a love affair with Central Illinois. The Braves have produced some of the best players in the college ranks and later the NBA. Names like Chet Walker and Hersey Hawkins. And now the Bradley women are edging their way into the heart of the area with a new campus arena, Renaissance Coliseum, and a top coach bringing in top talent. With no other big budget sports vying for attention, Bradley doesn't have a football team, Bradley basketball is king. Its fans are true, loyal, and quite knowledgeable. The person in charge of overseeing Bradley athletics is only in his second year in Peoria, but he knows by now what the fans expect. He is Dr. Michael Cross, and he is our guest on this day, the opening day of the Bradley regular season with a brand new coach. And we will discuss with him Bradley Athletics after these messages. Welcome back. Our topic today is Bradley University Athletics, and our guest is the man in charge of them, Dr. Michael Cross, the Bradley Athletics Director. Thank you for being with us today. Dr. Happy to Cross. be here. Thank you. We know, of course, that men's basketball is not the only sport on the hilltop. But with a new coach in Geno Ford, it's certainly the hottest topic in town right now, isn't it? It's a very hot topic. There's no question about it. Uh, coach Ford uh, arrived back in late March and has done a remarkable job of going into the community, letting people get to know him, letting people get to see what his style will be, mm -hmm. uh, what his approach is. And I think he's somebody who fits very, very well with the Peoria community and uh, has really done a lot to uh, ingratiate himself to the community, and I think he'll be well-received. So, But uh, big season, no question about it. Uh, just finished uh, our first home game, uh, and uh, we actually have our second home game right on November 16th, so we're very excited about that. There's something special about that November 16th home game too, correct? Uh, there's no question about it. That is a uh, the first time in 30 years we will have uh, Bradley basketball playing in uh, an on-campus setting. We're going to play a Division One opponent for the first time, Play Southeast Missouri State. It is uh, at, Renaissance seven, Coliseum. at Renaissance Coliseum. Okay. It's a smaller venue, different venue, and we'll be honoring the 1982 NIT championship team uh, oh. that evening. So we're very excited about that. Very looking, very much looking forward to having uh, those gentlemen return to campus and uh, celebrate their accomplishments uh, from the 82 season. Is that part of the season ticket package? Not part of season tickets, okay. uh, but tickets are available. I would encourage people, if they have an interest in going, to uh, call the ticket office or stop by in person and uh, pick up tickets. We'll also be giving away t-shirts to everybody in attendance. It'll be a replica style mm -hmm. t-shirt from the uh, 1986 uh, team that Bradley had. A uh, little different jersey, but very distinctive style. Had some red and blue in it, and I think fans will really like that when they pick it up. Okay, now, Renaissance Coliseum is not even half the size of the Civic Center, so you'll probably sell that out, won't you? Uh, I, I think we will. I think we will. We're, we're focusing on student attendance at this contest, okay. uh, so we're hoping they're going to take a large proportion of the tickets. Uh, you know, obviously we want to have as many season ticket holders there and Braves Club members as we can, but we think uh, it's the right size venue for this contest and we should have a really nice turnout and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the atmosphere is like in a full building uh, in just a couple of days. I want to go back to uh, the new coach. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's never pleasant to have to fire a coach, especially one who, at least when he came back, mm -hmm. had a lot of popularity. He was very popular as a player, mm -hmm. but isn't there... Well, explain a little bit, if you would, about the excitement that Geno Ford is, is generating around town. Well, I, I think the excitement uh, stems from a few things. One, the type of person he is. Okay. Uh, I mean, he's a very dynamic and charismatic person, uh, very genuine, and I think people really enjoy spending time with him. He's a natural conversationalist, and, and right out of the gate when you meet him, you can tell he's somebody who... Uh, understands what his mission is, he understands what he's trying to do, has a courage of his convictions, and has a passion about making Bradley uh, a championship caliber program. Uh, extend that then into the basketball portion, and uh, he's won and played at the highest levels. He's played as a professional. 
Uh, he scored uh, 1,700 points in his collegiate career at Ohio University and scored more points in high school than LeBron James did back in the state of Ohio. So he averaged 35 points a game in high school. Uh, he's, he grew up the son of a coach. I mean, he's got all the pieces that go into uh, somebody who looks like they could be successful at Bradley over the long haul. Okay, and how many years was he a coach before he came to Bradley? Uh, he was the head coach at Kent State for three years. Three years uh, okay. He won two uh, conference championships in the three years he was there. Mm -hmm. uh, he had coached a couple other institutions as head coach uh, at the lower levels, Division Two and Division Three, and was also and also had success at those institutions. So he's got a pattern and track record of of achieving at a high level and, and producing championship caliber programs, and that was obviously something that was very attractive to us when we uh, thought about bringing him to Bradley. How many candidates did you have? Uh, I don't know, around a dozen, somewhere in there. I mean, you talk to a lot of different people. I, I can tell you there was no shortage of people who had interest in the, in the really? situation. Oh, absolutely. Very, very attractive job. I would, I would suggest it was probably one of the best jobs available this past year in terms of the hiring cycle. Can you talk at all about what kind of team we're going to have? I know that a couple of key members graduated. Uh, we did lose a couple people to graduation. Uh, you know, I think w the best word to use uh, to describe our team is I think we'll be improved. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got some, some very good players coming back. Uh, Dyrica Sims Edwards, who's a very talented uh, player. Walt Lemon, who'll be in his sophomore season and is a very electric, uh, fast point guard who will do very well for us. Uh, couple that with the return of Taylor Brown, who mm -hmm. sat out this past season, and I think we're going to be in pretty good shape and have... Uh, some things people are excited to see. Weave that in with a, with a different style of play, I think a bit more up-tempo style of play, and uh, you know, that should be something that people are excited about. Did the return of Taylor Brown, did that surprise you that they're going to let him play? Um, I, I don't know if I would say it surprised me. I mean, it was, it was something you always hope for. I mean, yeah. you want what's best for the young man. Obviously, his health comes first. And mm -hmm. then from there, uh, making sure that we've got a... a you know, that he can contribute in ways both big and small. I mean, some people are leaders on the floor, some people are leaders are off the floor. Uh, he's somebody that we need on the floor, uh, making us better in a lot of different ways. Okay. When we come back, we'll discuss other sports at Bradley and their importance to the university. So please, stay tuned. Welcome back to the Peorian. We're with Dr. Michael Cross, Director of Athletics at Bradley University. Other Bradley sports have had success in recent years, and of course the soccer team. Absolutely. The lead eight a few years ago. Last year they won the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. Mm -hmm. Baseball, volleyball, cross country, tennis, golf, they've all had successes in the years past. Are these sports just as important to the university as basketball? I think it's absolutely crucial that we're successful in all of our sports. Um, when I sit with parents and when I sit with prospective student athletes, I want to be able to say to them that they're going to have both a distinctive educational experience and a championship experience. And uh, the old adage is the rising tide lifts all boats. And mm -hmm. I think that the rising tide in this case should be all 14 of our teams moving towards uh, championship caliber performances. So. Uh, we do have a lot of excitement in a lot of our sports. Obviously, Coach DeRose has had a very successful run for quite a while. Uh, he's had another tremendous season this year, and we're very excited about the program that he's built over time. Uh, but we've got some new coaches as well. Uh, coach Burns, Mark Burns, is our new cross-country and track and field coach, uh, has raised the performance of those programs and finished third in women's cross-country uh, this past season with uh, four freshmen and a sophomore leading the way. So we've got a very bright future there. Uh, with additional people coming in to make us uh, that much more successful. Uh, Jenny Mauer has had a good season in her first season as our women's volleyball coach, and we continue to try and identify ways to improve our performances, and that's a, a combination of uh, personnel, uh, facilities, and then obviously the quality academic experience that Bradley offers. And I certainly don't want to overlook the academic aspect of it. That is something that's very high on your list of priorities. Absolutely. And Aren't you on a, an NCAA committee regarding 
academics? I am, as a matter of fact. I'm on the I'm on two NCAA committees. I'm on the NCAA Committee on Academic Performance, which mm -hmm. uh, is one of the committees that's been involved in the recent changing of NCAA rules about eligibility for postseason uh, competition and raising the standards necessary academically to uh, be allowed to participate in postseason. Uh, and I'm also part of the NCAA's Legislative Council, which takes a lot of the, the laws and bylaws through uh, the legislative process and makes them become NCAA rules over the course of time. Do you uh, think there is a rebirth of focus on academics nationally? Uh, I hope there is. I hope there is. Uh, you know, I think one of the challenges we have is, is within the NCAA and why they've done the things they have is to try and change behavior. Um, not everybody takes academic, academics as seriously as I think we'd all like mm -hmm. to have happen. Uh, but given the proper structure, given the proper incentives, I think those things can happen. And so I think it's always been there. probably varies from institution to institution, and there's a lot of different institutional missions out there. But long story short, better academics is good for everybody. We're in the business of trying to get uh, young men and women college degrees and improving their life for the next 40 years, not just the four years that they're in the college environment. A lot of schools have proven that you can focus on academics a smaller school focused on academics and still succeed on the sports fields, mm -hmm. Duke, Stanford. There's no reason to think Bradley can't as well. Oh, there's no question. We, I think any time you've got the opportunity to use a strong academic environment and couple that with a great athletic environment, you can get the caliber of institutional experience, institutional brand that you just referenced. Uh, Bradley has the academic uh, wherewithal and the academic firepower to have that happen. And I think we also have the ability to do so on the playing fields and on our, on our court and basketball, whatever the sport is. Uh, but it's a matter of time. It's, it's a, it takes time to build. It takes time to put those things together and establish a culture of excellence and a culture where there's performance expectations that people will ultimately want to gravitate to when they're being recruited and then uh, help build and do the right things once they're in the environment and make us successful when we go out and represent Bradley across all of our sports. What are Bradley's graduation rates? Uh, Bradley's graduation rates are higher than the national average. Uh, we are in the high 70s to low 80s, uh, and we do very well. We do very well on those measures. We do very well on the uh, academic performance rating, which is an NCAA measure of how you're persisting towards graduation. Uh, most of our teams have perfect scores in that regard, and, and those that do not have perfect scores are very close to that perfect score. So in every measure and every way that you think about it, uh, our student athletes perform uh, at or better than the level of the student athlete population in general. And that's something we take tremendous pride in. That's our number one goal and the first thing we have to take care of before all the other pieces come together. Okay. We're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we'll ask Mike Cross about the recently completed fundraising campaign and what it will mean to BU and its athletics. But first, here's the Peorian's own literary and culinary guy, Kevin Kaiser. Good morning. It's your buddy Kevin here to talk about things of a literary and culinary nature. This week, it's time for another segment of Short and Funny. And no, it's not a segment about Ben Stiller, John Stewart, or Woody Allen. Oh, that's our third Woody Allen reference. You know what that means? Who mistake? All right. This week's Short and Funny book is The Comedy Writer, written by Pete Fairley, who's written and directed movies like There's Something About Mary and Dumb and Dumber. The Comedy Writer is loosely based on Peter's own experiences in Hollywood, which takes you into a hilarious world of semi-celebrities, sordid producers, surgically enhanced starlets, and some downright crazy people. There's even a scene where he pitches Seinfeld story ideas to Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. Now, the book is not terribly short at over 300 pages, but the story moves along briskly, which is perfect for reading over a couple long weekends. And we have a novel adaptation of local interest. Central Illinois native David Foster Wallace's book, Brief Interviews with Hideous Men, was adapted in 2009 by John Krasinski of The Office. It was Krasinski's directorial debut, and it has a huge cast, including Julianne Nicholson, Ben Shankman, Timothy Hutton, Chris Maloney, and Will Forte. Nicholson stars as a grad student who copes with a recent breakup by conducting interviews with different men from all walks of life. Uh, the movie was met by a general meh by audiences and critics, but it's worth checking out if only to hear Wallace's magnificent prose and see his words come to life. Now to things of a culinary nature. If you haven't seen Kaiser Party of Four, our unique take on restaurant reviews, well, what's wrong with you? Seriously, I can't believe you haven't watched them after all we've been through. I mean, I'd watch your unique take on restaurant reviews if you had one, but I guess I just care a little bit more. Anyway, they're posted online at thepeerian.com or on the YouTubes. If you cared about this relationship, you would watch them. 
That's all from this week's Literary and Culinary Corner, which is proud to announce our brand new sponsor, Snickers. Snickers is not only a candy bar, it's also a verb. Good morning. Welcome back to the Pure Inn. We're with Dr. Michael Cross, Director of Athletics at Bradley University. The capital campaign that ended a few weeks ago raised more than $161 million. Very true. Is that a pretty clear indication of what Bradley's alumni feel about the institution? I think it's a very clear indication, and it's not just alumni. It's people who have all types of affiliations. It's corporate support. Uh, it is alumni support. It's friends of the program. But it's a clear recognition of uh, the growth that's happening on campus, whether it's the Markin Center, whether it's the expansion of Westlake Hall that's taking place, uh, whether it's the building of the Renaissance Coliseum. Uh, across the campus, there has been a complete revitalization and a renaissance, if you will, uh, that really is uh, pushing Bradley to new heights and its best days um, are just in front of it. There's no question about it. Everything that you've mentioned that is going on right now, is it geared toward just trying to keep the campus updated? Is it geared toward trying to grow enrollment? Uh, I wouldn't, I don't, it's not geared towards growing enrollment. Uh, but it is geared toward making Bradley an institution of national distinction. Okay. Uh, and that happens a lot of different ways. You have to have first-class facilities. Uh, you have to have uh, first-class students. And the way you attract first-class students is through facilities, uh, but more importantly through faculty, uh, through scholarship offerings, and through academic opportunities that prepare students to become uh, future faculty members, to prepare them to go into the working world uh, as professionals in their chosen field, whatever it might be. So. Uh, all those things come together to make a, an incredibly distinct package uh, that uh, Bradley has, has honed since the time of Lydia Moss Bradley founding the institution uh, and training people in the practical arts and sciences, if you will. And um, uh, that's something that Bradley does very, very well and continues to build upon. And obviously the support that we receive through this campaign uh, demonstrates an understanding that that dream can indeed become a reality. Does it surprise you that Bradley, being as small as it is, has the kind of alumni support that it does enjoy. I mean, you know, up in Chicago, they've got the Chicago alumni. Sure, we've got know, Chicago and, alumni. Uh, they've got an incredible following by its alumni. Does that surprise you for an institution this size? Well, I, I don't think it's a question of size. I mean, the, 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 it's a question of loyalty, and loyalty okay. comes from people who had a good experience. So whether you're uh, a 30 or 40,000 uh, student state institution mm -hmm. uh, or an institution that has 5,000 students like we do, which I prefer to view as a midsize institution, um, you know, if you had a great experience and had a great educational experience, uh, had formative life experiences with friends, with faculty, uh, and have a fond recollection of your time on campus, whether it was through a fraternity, through an athletic experience, whatever it might be, uh, I think that creates an incredibly compelling reason for people to want to uh, give back to the institution and, and allow others to have a similar type experience uh, that come behind them and come after them. Renaissance Coliseum, is, it's a beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to showcase the university, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Did it uh, have any influence on your decision? Did that facility and the other new facilities influence mm -hmm. your decision to come to Bradley? I think it did. Uh, there's no question about it. And it did in a number of ways. First of all, when you've got that many things happening on campus, you've got great leadership, and obviously we have that in President Joanne Glasser. Uh, secondly, the opportunity to use those facilities and use them to attract coaches, to attract student athletes, I think is very, very important. Uh, and knowing that the, that the history of success is there that you can continue to build on is also crucial. And we continue to tell that story. We tell that story in the Berkland Family Heritage Hall, which is in the Renaissance Coliseum mm -hmm. that showcases all of our um, athletic accomplishments. And we also do it in the Hayden Clark Alumni Center, which has uh, an amazing uh, interactive display of Bradley's history throughout its 100 plus years. Uh, and I would encourage everybody to go and, and take an opportunity to see it. I mean, you can spend a couple hours in there easily seeing Bradley's background, there's sports displays, there's sections about fraternities, there's sections about uh, Bradley's Herology School, which was the, the watchmaking school and the clock school that uh, got Bradley started. I mean, there's so many different pieces that uh, anybody in the Peoria area can walk in and see that any day of the week and on weekends, uh, and I would encourage them to do that. Has the upgrading facilities helped the sports teams in attracting recruits? Yes, 
No question about it. Uh, we are seeing a, a, a great uh, uptick in number of recruits, uh, the level of those recruits, and the depth of their interest. And as I said before, uh, it's a number of things coming together. It's the quality of the facilities, but it's also the people. I mean, at the end of the day, I would, I would prefer to have uh, great people over great bricks and mortar. Uh, we have the for good fortune of having both, and I think when you have that, you've got a tremendous opportunity and a great combination uh, to build something very special that people in the Peoria community, uh, people on the Bradley campus and Bradley alumni, and people nationally would want to follow and be a part of. The future of Bradley athletics looks pretty good. It's very bright, very bright. Uh, we are, we are if, you're a if you're a stock picker, if you want to buy a stock, we're a growth stock, and uh, we're, we're heading in the right direction. So uh, invest now. No question about it. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Great seeing you. Thank you. Remember, you can see today's show in its entirety on our website, thepeorian.com, immediately following this broadcast. And be sure to join us next week right here on WHOI. Have a good week. Ooh. Mm -hmm.